Um, well, it's Aaron Rodgers' birthday today. He is 38 years old. And uh, this week, we had another little Aaron Rodgers um, COVID story, news story, where he said uh, maybe some of the coaches at Green Bay are giving information to the media, and uh, there's a lot of noise around Aaron Rodgers. Um, but he's special. He's sort of like, uh, remember the band Guns N' Roses, Axl Rose? Actually, Aaron's starting to look like Axl Rose. Um, Guns N' Roses would be two and a half hours late to go on stage. You didn't know if they'd show up, but God, when they went on the stage, blowtorch, great performers. Just the, uh, to me, Guns N' Roses is as good a band live as I've ever seen in my life. And Aaron's about as good a quarterback as we've all seen in our life. And, you know, I was thinking about this this morning is that when I think of Aaron, I don't think successful. I don't think talented. I don't even think very good. I think special. And special is a different word than very good. Special is different than excellent. Special is different than uh, successful. I mean, Jimmy Garoppolo and Kirk Cousins are successful. Uh, Dak Prescott and Derek Carr are very good. Uh, Joe Burrow is uh, talented. Special is different. In the NFL, to me, there are special is I can do things, not me specifically, but somebody can do things, man or woman, that other people can't do. I live in Los Angeles. The talented's on every corner. V excellence on every corner. Successful's on every corner. Special? Reed Hastings, Netflix, that's special. Total disruptor to television. In my lifetime, there's never been one of those. There's eight quarterbacks in this league to me that do stuff other people can't do. Doesn't mean they're always great. But those eight quarterbacks are Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson, Patrick Mahomes, Justin Herbert, Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers, Kyler Murray, and Russell Wilson, though he's having a down year. Yes, Justin Herbert set every rookie quarterback record in the history of the sport behind the second worst offensive line. He was a 4.2 biology major in college. He was a tutor for other students while quarterbacking his college. He's special. And when you're special, just get away with more. It's hard to fire special. It's hard to let go of special. Talented people get let go all the time. Good people get let go all the time. Special, uh, he's, she's high maintenance, he's high maintenance. Oh, he's tough to deal with. Yeah, there's nobody else. There's nobody else out there like her. There's nobody else out there like him. So Aaron Rodgers, happy, special 38th birthday. You're worth it because there's only eight people in the world that do what you do. Oh, let me just tell you something. <laughs> I don't like the word integrity. Okay, when I think of Oklahoma football, I'm sorry it's not the first word that comes out. I love Barry Switzer. I don't link him to integrity. He did what you do to win games. So Brian Kelly leaves. Lacks integrity. Lincoln Riley leaves. Lacks integrity. Hmm, it's interesting. Oklahoma, you do realize everybody else has a coach and you don't. You're losing recruits. You're going to have to steal somebody, right? Matt Rule, Carolina Panthers, would win if he stayed for 10 years at Oklahoma, he'd probably win four national titles. He would have to lack integrity, bail on the Carolina Panthers midseason. Brett Venables, what if Clemson, like they usually are, was like 11-0 playing for the national title? He would have to bail on Clemson to take your job, bail on all the players, right before a national championship game. Oh, I thought you were about integrity. Integrity. Your integrity is not mine. My morals aren't yours. Everybody has flexible morality. You ever go to Twitter and watch somebody swear and say rude stuff, and you look at their Twitter account, and it's like Christian. It's like, whoa, whoa time out. That's not terribly Christian of you, is it? Integrity. Take Luke Fickle. So Luke Fickle is the Cincinnati coach. He's been there for like four years. He's doing a great job. He's a great young coach, great candidate. He'll be a home run for somebody. He was up for the Notre Dame job, but they couldn't sit around and wait for a month because he's going to be in the playoff. They can't lose these recruits. They're rolling. So they went and got Marcus Freeman, who I was told it was a 50-50 split. You know, you, either one of them could be successful. But you had to take Luke Fickle out. So let me ask you this, because Luke Fickle, the truth is in the last two years, he's 21-1. and one. 
It's a weaker conference. It's not a power five. Cincinnati's going to dominate this conference as long as Luke Fickle's there. They're going to become the Boise State of the Midwest. Non-power five team that can beat power fives, and Luke Fickle's a great coach. He's going to win as long as he's there. And they're going to be like in this position every year as long as he's there. Is he trapped? Can he never leave? Can Luke Fickle never, ever take the Ohio State, Notre Dame? Because at some point, he will have to cut the cord to leave. Because you can guarantee Cincinnati's going to win that conference six of the next seven years with Luke Fickle. He doesn't have the right taking that team to a totally different level. Brian Kelly took Notre Dame, a billion-dollar brand. It was a dying brand. A dying brand. They're now the best, next to Ohio State, northern football brand in America. You don't think he has the right after 12 years to cut the court? He's doing Notre Dame a favor because Notre Dame's really not national championship viable this year. They'd be a huge underdog to Georgia. They'd be a big underdog to Michigan. They'd be an underdog to Ohio State, Oklahoma State, Cincinnati. They already lost them at home soundly. There's six, seven teams they'd be an underdog to, maybe eight. This is the year Brian should have left because next year, Notre Dame may be a two or a three seed late in the year. Look at their schedule. Look at who they return. Look at their recruiting class. Next year, Brian knows I better leave now. That's why he made this decision. Brian knows last year's team was excellent. Next year's is excellent. This is a rebuilding team. And because it's a year of parity, they kind of snuck up on people a little bit. Notre Dame's better than everybody thought. So this is the year to leave. But folks, when I hear people talk about integrity, it's always flexible. Morality, it's always flexible based on what you need. The nice guy, go read their Twitter avatar, what nice people they are. They go to church every Sunday and they're swearing at kids. I mean, it, it's, I don't want to hear about your integrity. Oklahoma football, the first word I think is not integrity. It's winning football games, whatever it takes. These are not volunteers. They're, they're not married. These when you receive a check that makes it your career, you're entitled to make your own decisions in that space. Oklahoma better steal somebody else's coach <laughs> who will bail on kids that he promised he'd be there for. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.